Welcome back everybody. We're here with another one of my time-lapse model build videos. Uh, this is episode 11 in this series. Uh, and this one here is actually a pretty special kit uh, as it is a rare kit. Um, it is the Ibex 148 scale T6 Texan II. Uh, and I actually used a set of Caracal decals, this set here, uh, that I did up with this version, the Canadian, the RCAF version, which we considered a CT155 um, Harvard II. Um, so, Ibex did this kit a few years ago. It was a limited run, sh was a short run kit. And short run kits have a number of issues because the molding tends to be not as robust because they're only planning to make a small number of them. So they tend to have a lot of issues. The fit isn't always there. Um, the detail usually isn't always there. This particular one, uh, in the end, it turned out really good. Again, stick around to the end, take a look at how this thing uh, came out. Um, the build did take a little bit of effort. I do not recommend this kit for an average builder. You definitely need to have a little bit of experience in building some kits before you tackle this one. But it turned out great, uh, so stick around. Here we go. Uh, 148 scale Ibex T6 Texan II time-lapse model build. As always, my name is Sean, and this is Sean's Aviation. So as usual with these aircraft kits, I did get started with the cockpit. Um, so there isn't a lot of uh, detail in the molded plastic cockpit. It's pretty bare bones. Um, all of the, um, the instrument panel itself has a little bit of raised detail, uh, but there are a lot of decals that go on, which we'll see a little later. Uh, the cockpit tub itself is pretty bland. All the side walls are all done up with decals and the seats are resin, uh, which m definitely makes it pop at the very end, but the, the actual plastic itself is not very detailed, which is pretty common with a short run kit.
So as I mentioned, uh, the cockpit uh, side panels and instrument panel were done with decals. Um, and here I am putting the decals on. Unfortunately, my big head uh, is in the way for most of this, but you'll uh, get to kind of see the process of it being put together.
So here we go guys, a bit of an update on the T6 build. Uh, you've seen some of the progress up to now, basically just uh, cutting off parts and doing some, uh, some painting. Um, but I am just about to start the construction process. So with the painting, I've got, uh, start with the, uh, the cockpits, I've got the gray uh, painted, I've got the black painted, I've got the uh, stuff weathered. Um, the cockpit here has all been weathered. I've got the white painted, so the wheel well has been painted white. I've done a little bit of weathering inside the wheel wells. And then for the parts themselves, I'm not going to dump any of these out. Uh, but you've seen already, I've got the landing gears painted white, uh, the wheel hubs painted white. There was a bit of an issue with the wheels, the main wheels. Um, I had painted them um, black, and then I was masking to paint the white. And while I went to fix one of the masks, it actually pulled the black paint right off the wheel. Uh, so I just don't think I prepped it properly. I didn't uh, clean it up uh, well enough. So I had to, I painted the white oversprayed. I'll have to paint the black by hand. I also painted the gear doors and the flaps uh, white uh, in line with how most modern aircraft are painted. However, uh, after doing some further research, it turns out the T6 gear doors were blue, the exterior blue. Uh, well, at least the CT156 gear doors were uh, the blue, the external color, both inside and outside. So I will repaint over those later on in the build. Uh, so at this point, I'm basically ready to start assembling the fuselage and getting uh, the main port parts put together. I'm going to do the weathering on the landing gear and all that kind of stuff later. Um, get stuff installed and then weather it. I didn't want to go through too much in case I had to clean stuff up. It's just a pain. So I'll do all that later. Um, I did get the wings assembled uh, just because having to put the gear together, it's a little easier when the wings are assembled. Um, so this shouldn't take long. It's a relatively simple build. So just a couple of parts in the cockpit tub here. Uh, get the fuselage buttoned up, get the wings glued on, and then it'll be uh, the fit and finish and the last little steps. So stay tuned for that. Things are coming along. So here we are about uh, two months into the build. Um, haven't done the mid build update yet, so I figured now's a good time as ever to knock one out. A uh, bit of progress has been made. Um, so the fuselage here, um, I'm sure as you've seen, uh, as you've been following the whole build up till now, um, is assembled. Uh, seems need a little bit of work. Uh, the way they designed this kit was actually quite nice where they had the tail fin mounted to one side of the fuselage and the other side of the fuselage, I don't even know what side it was, now I think it's this side, just butts up directly to the side of the tail, um, so it minimizes the amount of seam work you have to do. Uh, in reality, there's just a little bit of a seam underneath here, a little, even up here it gets covered. So there's, there's not a lot of, of seam. Uh, it, it builds up quite nicely. Um, so far it's went together nice. I'm leaving the nose section off. Um, there needs to be weight put into the nose. Um, the instructions tell you how much, but I'm actually going to effectively um, build it up and then figure out how much I need to keep it on its nose, and then I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, I find instructions are notoriously bad. You put what they say and it still tail sits, or you put what it says and it's so heavy that it, it starts breaking landing gear. Uh, the wings themselves are glued together as well. Um, kind of went against my uh, my usual uh, procedure of gluing the upper wings on before I glued it all together, but um, with test fitting it all, it actually fits together um, quite nicely, so I'm not terribly worried with this build. Um, there's not a lot seam-wise to clean up, and it wouldn't have really made a difference anyways, so um, the worst seam is actually the step between the forward fuselage and this little back piece back here. So, you know, waiting um, and gluing it together later wouldn't have made a difference. So, you know, it still looks good. Um, again, talk about how big an aircraft is. Just put it in perspective. This is the current two-seat 
advanced trainer, and this is the World War II fighter. Um, so you can see, you know, this is a this is a big plane. Um, so yeah, I like the way it looks. I don't know how it's going to look with paint. It's going to be a bit of a challenge painting that gloss blue. That insignia blue is always a tough color, and then it needs to have um, bare metal, uh, basically just outclad uh, chrome along the leading edges of, of the vertical and wings and the horizontal stabilizer and as well as the spinner. Sorry, this will be aluminum. This will be Alclad aluminum. The spinner, the resin spinner will be Alclad chrome. So there's going to be a bit of effort on this to get the uh, the metalizer paint to look proper. Um, but, I mean, again, it's it's going together quite nicely. It looks really good, uh, you know. I'm going to be excited to get this thing done and get it uh, on the shelf with my Hawks and everything else. So that's the mid-build update. By the way, um, I'm going to show you some close-ups of how this cockpit turned out. It was a pain, as I'm sure you saw, all those little tiny individual decals, which I normally hate and usually look like crap. But this, this looks amazing. Look at that. That is a beautiful looking cockpit. You know, even the side consoles as decals, they work. They honestly work. I'm not upset at that detail at all. It looks great. I'm going to try to build this with the cockpit open, and I think it's going to look great if I do. So I'm very happy with how this cockpit turned out. Very, very happy. I just need to clean up this one little seam through here. I'm not sure how I'm going to pull that off, but, uh, you know, anyway, there was just a bit of glue and tape. But, yeah, very, very happy with how how this turned out. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, get some more of this build done, and then uh, we'll get some paint on it.
So here we are, time for a quick uh, update on the progress on this one before we go any further. Um, so as I'm sure if you've been paying attention up till now, um, most of the airframe is assembled. I've been doing a lot of uh, putting and sanding for the past couple of days, if not weeks. Uh, so I'm working away on it. The big issue on this, uh, the wing joint, was a bit of a finicky joint. There were some weird steps and, and whatnot. I got most of that cleaned up. Uh, I put a quick coat of primer in some spots here just to check the seams. Um, so I'll be um, going over it a little bit again to clean up some of the stuff. Uh, but you'll see the wing. It's not too bad. There's a little bit of a step in here I still got to work on. On this side here, there's a cup bit of a, uh, uh, a gap where the wing... Actually, there's quite a bit of flex in that wing. That's... Uh, it's a bit annoying, actually. I might uh, I might have to run a bit of glue through there again, try to get that to seal up. Uh, the nose area here, the seam through here is nice and tight. The insert here is nice and tight, no worries there. This rear uh, seam here is nice and tight, I don't have to worry about that. Um, forward seam, where the wing meets the fuselage, up here where I cleaned up along the intake, cleaned up nice and tight. Um, in here, just the tiniest little bit of work, nothing crazy. Um, clean up some of the panel lines it's good to go this seam here I'm very happy with again just a little bit of a uh, cleanup on the panel lines be ready to go I'm using the air brake as a um, mask for the opening so I can clean that up and then put pull it off and put it in after back here again I need a little bit of cleanup in and around some of these antennas and right here um, right between uh, this little strake and the rear strake there's a little little, little tiny gap I'm gonna try to clean that up with a bit of a Maybe some white glue actually, I think it could work in there very well. The biggest thing, um, which is a little annoying, and I'll post a picture here uh, in a second. Uh, actually, why not wait a second, I'll do it right now. Um, the gaps on the tail, here's the picture. Look at how bad these caps were. Uh, so as you can see here, I've done a bit of a filling. Uh, the top uh, looks pretty good. Again, just the tiniest bit of cleanup. Another quick sanding and then uh, rescribe some of the panel lines. On the bottom, a bit of a different story. I still have quite a bit of uh, cleanup to do in this corner here, and there's still a pretty significant step. Uh, this side's worse, so I gotta put at least another coat of putty and a bit more sanding on that before I can go any farther. Overall, pretty happy with the, stand, uh, the progress. Um, usually when you give it a first coat of primer, it shows all these ugly, uh, ugly uh, nastiness. This isn't that bad. Overall, it really isn't as bad as it could have been. Um, so yeah, I gotta do a I'm gonna do a bit of cleanup in the cockpit here. Try to get hide this center seam a little bit more. And there's a few pieces here in this back uh, bulkhead I gotta put on. So I'm gonna clean up what I can see with the uh, the putty. Sorry, with the um, primer. Clean up some of those a uh, uh, little bit of extra putty that's there. Uh, get these seams all cleaned up nice and tight. Um, get the canopy ready to go, and then I can get everything masked for final paint. Uh, the big issue is it is a heavy tail sitter. Uh, luckily, I had some of these uh, lead weights laying around. There are um, a quarter of an ounce or seven grams per weight. And my plan is to uh, actually mount these um, inside the nose. Uh, they do both fit in here quite nicely. And then there is the, uh, the actual nose part, which fits in. Um, <laughs> the downside is, if you take a quick look at this, it is a uh, brutal, brutal seam. It is going to take quite a bit of work to get that nose to look blend in properly with the rest of that uh, fuselage. So it's going to take a bit of work with that once I get the uh, the nose weights in place. So I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to get as much of the overall fuselage cleaned up as I can so that once that's mounted that's all I have to work with and then I can get everything else uh, put together and uh, like I said, my plan is to have the cockpit open on this one, so I'm, I'm trying to keep everything in here as clean as possible so that it will be open. But there you go. Uh, stay tuned with uh, the rest of this video. You'll see the final little bit of cleanup on this, and uh, we'll get to some paint.
Uh, so this is me doing the work on the uh, vacuform cockpit that comes in the kit. Uh, the video itself might look a little weird at times as I send a little section. I did record one of my tips and tricks videos. Uh, keep an eye out for that to come out in the near future on how to work with vacuform plastic.
So here I am, I'm actually going in the process of gluing the nose weights into the nose. Uh, the aircraft is a bit of a tail sitter, uh, so I was able to put some lead weight down inside the nose before I glued the actual front uh, nose piece of the fuselage in place to make sure it would sit on, uh, the, main, on the wheels properly without tail sitting. And as you'll see here, I get the uh, the paint is all completed, and then uh, I mask away for the leading edges, and I did all the leading edges with um, Alclad um, aluminum or aluminum uh, along the leading edges of the wings, the horizontal stabs, and the vertical stabs.
So here we are folks, quick, got a bit of a quick mid-build update uh, on the Harvard 2. Um, painting is done, gloss coat is done, it's effectively ready uh, for decals. So as I, if you've been following along the build up till now, um, you will have seen the, uh, uh, the paint is on, leading edges are painted in Alclad. I coated it with an Alclad clear so I wouldn't ruin the, uh, the Alclad finish on the leading edges. The um, aircraft is basically ready for decals, so I'm going to do that next. I'm not going to do very much weathering on this. I might just do a tiny hint of exhaust staining down the side after the decals are on. And then uh, another gloss coat to seal everything in. I do have to do a flat black anti-glare panel on the nose, but I'll paint that after I gloss coat the rest and seal it. Uh, because I want to leave that flat where the rest obviously will be gloss. So I'll just paint that at the end. And then the canopy, uh, which I did get painted, um, finally will be mounted in the open position. So I'm going to have to mess around with that and uh, get it to fit in the open position. So yeah, um, after, like I said, after this, uh, we're basically looking at uh, decals, um, a seal and coat, a hint of exhaust staining and a little bit of weathering and then attaching the final bits, landing gear, canopy, pitot tubes, all that stuff. I've got the exhaust painted up. I used uh, the Alclad stainless steel and then I used a um, exhaust manifold color so it actually has like a bit of a heat distorted metal look to them. So it's actually got a bit of a brownie metallic tinge to them just the way a normal uh, exhaust would look. So those have been clear coated and glossed so they're not going to rub off and they'll stay like that. And then the spinner, I used the Alclad Chrome, so it's got a bit of a shine going on, so it's going to look really good sitting on the front of that plane. Uh, the real ones are like mere finish, uh, which isn't too easy to get to with a, um, I mean, I, I, I could always buff it up and really go out, but I'm not going to worry too much. I mean, it's just, it is going to look really, really good mounted to the nose of that. So I'm pretty happy with it that way it is, so I'm just going to leave it as that. So that's that. So as I said, stay tuned, uh, decals, weathering, and then uh, this thing will be finished. And here I start the decal process. Uh, these decals are amazing. I have never had a problem with Caracal decals. I do not get paid for this, but I will tell you with 100% certainty, do not hesitate to use Caracal decals. They go down quickly, they go down easily, they don't crack, they don't do anything funny. They settle in very nice. I use a, a solver set for my, my solving solution and they, uh, the setting solution, I should say, and they go right down without any issues. I love Caracal decals. They look amazing.
And here you can see I'm masking for that flat black anti-glare panel across the front. Um, I should have mentioned with the decals, I actually uh, sealed this with the same um, Alclad gloss that I used on the P47 because I did the, the, the bare metal leading edges. I did not want to lose that, uh, that, that metalizer look. So I used an Alclad sealer gloss coat before and after decals and it seals great. I'm able to mask over the decals as you can see and there's no issues at all. So as I said, I'm doing the flat black, no section, and then I went ahead and started gluing on a lot of the fiddly bits. Here I'm gluing the prop together. Um, the uh, props themselves are plastic and the spinner is resin. So I did the spinner in Alclad Chrome and the props get simple flat black and I painted the tips in the red and white. And then I'm gluing them in a feathered position as it does have a PT6. And when you uh, shut down the PT6, the props automatically go into a feathered position. So I'm gluing those together every blade at a time, just making sure it seats nicely and all the blades line up properly.
And then here she is all finished. And as usual, I have a couple of shots here of the finished product for you to take a look at. Uh, check in the description. I will have a link to the full picture log of the build of this on my website. Take a look at that if you're interested. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.